to the Horror Hour. Hello and welcome back to the Horror Hour, the place where we discuss, debate and disagree on all things horror. I'm on your co-host, George, and today I'm joined by a gaggle of guests today. I'm very excited from the hot new horror movie on the block, Influencer. We have the director, writer, producer, editor, he's a man of many talents. It's Curtis David Harder. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having all of us. No, no problem. And alongside that, we have the fantastic cast. We have Emily Tennant, who plays Madison. Hello. Hello. We have Sarah Canning, who plays Jessica. Hello. Hi. We have Rory Saper, who plays Ryan. Hello. Hi, hi. And finally, we have Cassandra No, who plays CW. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. I'm wonderful. Well, let's just dive into it, because I saw this film... It was funny, I was on Twitter on Tuesday night, maybe Monday night, and I saw Dead Meat James tweet about it saying you should everyone should check out this film. And I was like, oh, I haven't even, like it didn't, normally I get the notifications on Shudder, so I checked it out, and literally about 10 minutes after I finished it, I tweeted um, Curtis, and I was like, hello, I, I need to talk about this film with all of you. <laughs> it was very kind. And so thank you so much for such short notice for coming on today, because I, I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to talking about everything. So um, Curtis, I want to really start with you. The concept of the movie, how how did it come about? Yeah, so Tesh Gutekanda, who I wrote it with, um, and he also produced the film, we were kind of just talking. I had a trip planned to Southeast Asia back in 2019, and we'd always kind of played around with, we were writing a bunch of different concepts together. And this one kind of started out as kind of a joke about how you travel all the way across the world, and the first thing you'll do is go eat Western food or find a burger joint or something. Um, and just kind of like, we wanted to kind of subvert expectations of familiarity of why we kind of trust things we're familiar with and how that can kind of be not the best way to approach things. Approach it, definitely. Um, and obviously it's set in Thailand. Um, how was it filming out there? Was it all smooth sailing pretty much? <laughs> It, it was, I mean, it was super supportive. It was kind of a weird time. We were originally supposed to shoot the movie in early 2020 and it got pushed back because of the COVID. So there's a kind of a unique challenge of shooting during a pandemic like because right, right kind of, as soon as Thailand opened up, we were pushed back about a year and a half. And as soon as they opened up, we were kind of on planes heading over there. So there was some, a lot of benefits to the idea that tourism was kind of going through like some serious withdrawal. So they were really excited to have and tourism starting to come back and so there's a lot of support from the local community and, and everything um, but then also a lot of the the challenges of, of kind of traveling around the country and traveling internationally when travels has become had become so much more difficult yeah that's all you feel like everything's a lot more tighter locked away now in terms of accessibility to a lot of places which is yeah. a shame but hopefully we'll get to a point where we're back to where we used to be um and also so i was looking obviously you were a producer on the movie superhost which sarah starred yep. in and co-produced um and brandon the director is a producer on this movie so i just wanted to yeah. confirm because in my head is it safe to say that these two movies exist in the same universe yeah, they're the same. same. Yeah, it's the same, Jessica. I'm she not. just has alter egos on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, Sarah. If yeah, I mean, I was just trying to make sense of, but then I can't say anything that would spoil the movie because I was going to see if, if she could cross over, and I'm like, well, that was really literally, <laughs> literally like my next question was coming off that to you, Sarah. Obviously, this is you playing another sort of influencer content creator, um, very different to Superhost. How did you, mm -hmm. did you go about approaching this character of Jessica differently to Claire? And then I was going to ask, do you think there was ever a time at an influencer conference back in the day that maybe a young Jessica and Claire crossed paths? <laughs> oh, I love that idea. Yeah, I definitely approached Jessica differently than Claire. Osric and I, for Superhost, um, sort of did a lot of back and forth in terms of developing the relationship and we watched a lot of uh youtube couples which we were we were just like our minds were blown that mm -hmm. <laughs> people are in relationships and and doing that somehow um well done <laughs> i am uh really uh, afraid of posting <laughs> anything <laughs> online so so it just I, I know emily and i had a conversation about about this you know both playing influencers in this 
in this film and and just like I had to watch videos of how people pose like I don't understand any of it like I, mm. I literally don't understand any of it so um but I definitely took inspiration from a couple of people and that mm. was really helpful and had uh, a great conversation um with Kurt and with Tesh and about um what kind of businesswoman this character should be. And that's a similarity, I guess, I would say between Jessica and Claire, like both very business minded in terms of their interaction with social media. Yeah. And I, t- I have to say, because I I didn't read the cast list or anything when I watched, I just went straight into this film and I it took me like a minute and I was like, oh my God, because to me, like it's com- you were just so in a great way. Obviously you were so different, like in this role. And I was like, like you're a chameleon so it was it was great to to see that um, and last time we spoke and you, you touched on it then obviously you mentioned the world of content creation and, and social media being quite overwhelming to you personally and that you didn't really take a lot of that in do you still feel that way again after like like set round two are you still like oh no has it made you even more back away <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a lot more so than I felt before <laughs> I would say I think it's both you know like getting to jump into this film with all of this great team and, you know, the many conversations that we've had about it, but also uh, just, I think my own brain, you know, films, the films influence aside, like my own brain is pulling like further and further and further away from, yeah, I don't know. I just find it, I do find it really overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, it is, I, it's funny because this type of film like appeals to me in a way because I am a, social media manager like that's my job so mm-hmm. like my life is social media like work work and then my hobby is obviously like this podcast stuff. so like I live on yeah. the internet and it's so like draining a lot of the time mm-hmm. so it's like it I completely send it and I was reading something about like the new the generation alpha how they will be a lot more backed away from social media because like it's like mm-hmm. this era who were really into it and everyone else the younger generation will be like why are we like why are you posting your whole life on the internet like they'll understand the tropes and the what not to do's in a way and kind of back mm-hmm. away from it, which I thought was quite interesting because it's kind of going back to like oh we don't want to yeah it's Unreal. yeah it's crazy mm-hmm. um which brings me to my question this is a question for sort of everybody um while we're on the topic mainly of social media if you could change or remove one thing from the vast chasm that is social media what would it be let's go emily Wait. i feel, feel like you know oh yes cassandra tell me what is the chasm a big <laughs> ass area a okay. deep hole gotcha a deep okay. abyss yes basically <laughs> <laughs> Can we just delete tick? Sorry. I don't, oh, don't worry. I don't think that's our, uh, our <laughs> audience is a bit older. So the whole thing. Emily, you go first. Go ahead. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I just think it's all such a nightmare. Like, I wish it just all disappeared tomorrow and we mm-hmm. could go back. Like, my life is not content. I cannot view it that way. And mm-hmm. it makes me really sad that so many people walk through this world thinking, well, what should I do today? What can I post? I, I just. <laughs> I say take it all down. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I, I think just like the the, the attention span aspect. If, if there's a way to mm-hmm. do less yeah. short form, like I, I I was reading about like the 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 millennial pause the other day of like how like older people using TikTok have like like it's like a split second and that's like losing attention span. And I'm like, Oh man, we are, we are screwed. <laughs> if, that's, if that's where we're at. Yeah. yeah. I honestly like, I, I mean, I love Instagram. Like I, I definitely do not, I'm not, I find it stressful posting. I mean, thinking about having to post something all the time Mm -hmm. is really stressful. But Mm -hmm. aside, like that bit to the one side, I like, I just love pictures. I love looking at pictures. I also love knowing what my friends are doing and I don't have to ask them. Well, that's the thing. Which is like so beautiful. (laughs) That's also the thing that I don't like about it. It's like, if you didn't post it, it didn't matter. If you didn't post it, you didn't do it. I hate that like mentality of it all. 
like I'm on it. We're like in, in the UK right now. And I feel the need to post on my social media that I'm here, but I'm like, I just, oh, I don't know. I think it's, be- I think it's nice that like, yeah. we'll have a whole load of photos when we get home to show people or even a load of photos to post on Instagram. Right. Like, I think it's always funny. Like I posted a photo that was taken in Canada, like t- a couple of days ago. Cause I just, I mean, cause you're like, because whatever, but it's also quite funny because no one, people will still think you're in Canada. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's quite funny. Anyway. Do you also have the anxiety of like you're present, you're on the trip, you take the photos, you're like, I'll post it later. And then you get home and you're like, well, now I need to curate an album yes. and the photos line up. And now I've spent, you know, an hour on this thing and I don't want to look at it anymore. And I throw my phone yeah. across the yeah. and I don't post anything, but there's, that's it feels, I, yeah, I posted a year later. Perfect. But us, uh, us millennials, like we can keep it simple. Are we all we're all millennials, right? Yeah, we are. Mm-hmm. We can all just keep it simple, right? We can just post one photo at any time and be happy with that. Just move on. We don't have to dabble in all of this content creation. I it's stressful. Yeah, it is. it's horrible and it's stressful and it sucks doing it in real life as well. You never it never feels good. Mm. Definitely, Sarah. Anything more to add? I mean, we know you don't like it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I have, I have Instagram. Instagram's the only thing that I have left. It's the final frontier for me. Mm. Um, <laughs> and uh, I actually agree with Rory. I like seeing photos of what friends are doing. And sometimes I'll do a thing with friends. I try not to be declarative in my life really about much. But sometimes my a few close friends, I'll say like, I'm not going on Instagram for a few weeks. Can we send it? Can we text each other photos? <laughs> like what a like revelatory thing to do. Like I kind of laugh at myself and I'm, I'm like, I know this is sort of lame, but can you please send me, text me photos of what you're doing? Because I don't want to feel so out of the loop, but I will sometimes just do that because I, I, I want to like, I'm sort of embarrassed to say my brain is such a different brain if I don't use it at all. And it does have its benefits, especially, you know, being able to spread the word about, especially independent projects, like it, it really has a place for us as, you know, people in the film industry, but I am just better. I'm just better. I'm just better with myself too, when I, when I don't. So oh, that didn't really answer the question though, did it? Like what's That's the okay. one thing I I uh, I think, I mean, I think there should be serious, um, like, I, I, I think there should just be serious limits on all of it. Like, I know people can set their own and whatever, but like, mm-hmm. would it be so crazy to say, like, this is an app that only works for 30 minutes a day? Like, would that be crazy? Really? I don't know. I just am devastated when, I, like, I hear from sometimes, like, young, like, people in their early twenties or late teens. I recently had a conversation with a, a, a really lovely person who, you know, said I'm, and, and we were doing something fun. And she said, I'm so anxious because it was like a business thing and she couldn't be checking TikTok. And she was like, I'm, I'm so anxious. And I was like heartbroken mm-hmm. <laughs> for her because she, like, I think a lot of people need like an actual reset, you know, like it really grabs hold of people. And I think it's not the most fair thing to do to a a population of people who like the attention economy is very serious, serious business. So yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, like for me, because my social media, so I'm 20, I'm 27. So like my big, like Facebook was like when you were kid, it was like really exciting. And then, um, Instagram was like the main thing and that was when you had like XX Pro and Valencia which were all those like cool in, like it was just like so stupid and like light-hearted and then mm-hmm. I feel and YouTube was like a big thing then when I was cause especially like in the UK you had like the British YouTubers like Zoella and all these people who were like the first people to like the idea and that's something I think I think not get rid of but amend is the idea of monetization on the internet because I think 
the fact that anybody can bait and well obviously if you're posting really inappropriate stuff you can't but mo- mainly anyone can get monetization for screaming the loudest or doing the craziest mm. stuff and so it adds like a, a role of entitlement when there are people like short films and you know speakers and stuff like that who are on the internet that obviously i believe deserve that monetization but i think like you there should be like sort of a uh, somewhere where we say you know this is the type of content that you know is allowed that money rather than just because all that happens is people just become so competitive you know yeah like and stuff now especially with the likes i mean instagram was the one that kind of pushed it into the vein of um oh look how great my life is and Mm -hmm. then i feel like youtube was kind of like here's a day in my life and you're like I mean, I used to sit there and watch 30, 45 minute videos of somebody like, oh, we're going to we're going to Waitrose to do some shopping. And I was like, oh, my God, this is like I would come home from school and watch it. And then like now I think what a waste of like time that was. So Mm. I think. But then again, short term content has absolutely ruined um, my (laughs) like I really I, I, I struggle. I have to put my phone in another room when I'm watching a film to for fear like of just picking it up out of the and just scrolling and doing absolutely oh, nothing yeah it's a really bad and yeah. tiktok i think has made that worse because like we said you know it's like you need to grab them in the first 0.1 second and, if you, and people are just doing this and it's not even important anymore like looking at the photos of close family and friends is lovely and youtube and having sort of informational or fun entertainment content this is just like i know they they say oh you know this is more real because it's you know unedited like instagram was the one that was kind of filtered whereas tiktok mm. is supposedly very real and it so i just think yeah i think we just need to take the money away from a lot of people and be like do it because you enjoy it not because you're trying to go viral and do this trend like mm. and i think because i was going to ask you were talking about um so like the you know a 30 minutes you can only use this app for 30 minutes because I don't think it's it's never really taken off. It was a thing and then it wasn't, which is Be Real. Do you know, have you heard of Be Real? <laughs> so, like, I liked the idea of Be Real. I thought it was fun and kind of cool for those who are watching that don't know. It's basically, like, everyone gets a notification at the same time. And it's like, take a photo of what you're doing now. The only problem I find is that people kind of found a loophole and were like, oh, I'll just wait until... And I had friends that would be like, they're like, oh, so it's time to do Be Real. And they were like, oh, no, I'm saving it for tonight. Um, when I'm going out and I'm like well that's not being oh. real is it because you're waiting yeah. for some so like even that I think um doesn't work yeah. it's annoying as well you can't yeah. turn on those oh uh, no it's annoying. I deleted it for that reason as soon as you get told to do something you're like I don't want to do it yeah it's not <laughs> right absolutely not a vibe um okay oh. well now we've no. torn down um social media Let's move back and we've to the solved film. yeah, yeah we've we solved, solved the problem it. <laughs> <laughs> um so cassandra obviously like cw in the words of um wendy williams cw is an icon she's a legend and she's the moment um how much fun did you have <laughs> playing this role oh my god so much fun these types of ro- like this role i don't know if i ever get to play someone as layered as mm-hmm. cw ever again um yeah. The once in a lifetime opportunity. So of course I had to jump on and say yes right away. Um, yeah, it was crazy. I got to do so many things for the first time. My first lead motorcycle murder, not murder, but like <laughs> drowning. Is it the first swimming. time murdering? I mean, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Shut up. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it was a lot of firsts for me. So that was really, really exciting. I had like the best time. I had never been to Asia also. So that was just another thing as well. That was just so incredible. This whole project was just, I don't know, a dream. Just mm-hmm. such a dream. So yeah, she was she was a lot of fun. She was so cool. And like her full arc, I was I went from like loving her to hating her to like look like it was you um, I mean obviously what she was doing a lot of the time wasn't really what we'd say is good stuff but no. uh, you know there's something about her that I was kind of like you know if she was a little bit calmer she's got the right idea I, I know what I know where her heart is here but <laughs> she's going about it the wrong way she is she is yeah you're right she does have the right idea and I was going to say like sort of obviously I know don't want to give too much away but like in terms of what drives her and kind of like creating that character was it kind of all very much written for you or did you kind of have conversations with Curtis and with everyone else that kind of like uh, how to what she became on screen 
No, we definitely had conversations about her, but we wanted her to stay like quite mysterious, which is why you don't you don't learn a lot about why she, why she does what she does. Mm-hmm. It's a prequel, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we had conversations about her, and uh, yeah, it all kind of came together before. But it was interesting because we had a, a script change while we were in Thailand. So without giving up too much away, there is a shift in CW halfway through the script. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was quite spontaneous, actually. And it, it came together with Kurt and with Tesh in Thailand, kind of like in the moment, which was just so fun to do. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I like I I could see some like changes throughout the film. So that's interesting to now I'll have to go back watch it now and kind of see more of it. But yeah, she was she was a great time. And yeah, I hey, prequels, sequels, whatever. We'll take everything we can at this point. Let's get the um influencer cinematic universe. We'll get super host in there, we'll do it all, we'll have a fab time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> listen. I'll we'll we'll talk. Um so, so Emily, you played the influencer role like so well like to go from the happy happy happy-go-lucky girl to the way that like at points when she the camera stopped and her face just like dropped to a normal human how did you sort of go about preparing for the role of Madison and kind of working out what was real and what wasn't when it came to who she really was well I think I really related to Madison when I read the script because Mm -hmm. I had a complicated relationship with social media as an actor it's part of our job we should be able to promote ourselves and promote the things we're working on and do that and do it well and also feel like, ah, I want to keep some of my life private and how much do I post? How much do I not post? And the idea that social media means connection and you're reaching out and people are reaching out to you and there's all this connection happening. But the reality that once the phone's put away, you're alone. And if you're having these amazing experiences, does it mean anything if you're not sharing it with anyone, whether that's a friend or a boyfriend or whoever? So I think I just really related to Madison. And as an actor, you kind of know how to put it on. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, you can drop that very quickly. So uh, I'm glad that came across in the film. Yeah, it definitely did. And again, like for both you and and so did you have like a conversation on how to like, did you pick up on, did you say, okay, I'm looking at these influences for inspiration? You like, in terms of, because they were both, as I say, what was so great is that you can, they're both two types of influences that we all know. Um, I'm, I'm friends with some of them. Um, and so, like, how did you, like, sort of decide, like, decide which who was going to feel which vibes? If that makes sense. Yeah, Sarah and I chatted a bit. I mean, Kurt and I definitely talked also. Um, mm-hmm. I know Sarah had specific people she was looking at. We shared those, you know, we'd, we'd look at things together. I think we both had our own way of, of going forward as to like who these influencers were. I know um, we talked about it with Kurt that Sarah's character was almost a little bit more older, wiser, mature, Um maybe I think more business savvy. Like mm-hmm. that's what I felt um, from her character for sure. And Madison's a little more naive to it all, I think. Sarah? Yeah, yeah, de- definitely. I think it was sort of like, um, and and fun. And I think for both of us in presenting different challenges to CW, um, you know, like, because they're very different experiences with each of, of these women. Um, and we talked, we, we definitely talked with Kurt about kind of shaping that in terms of like first act, second act, um, and like what changes, what, mm-hmm. and what, you know, propels Cass as CW in this like really twisty, strange journey and getting to highlight like those, those, those personality shifts um, in CW and like which, what will each character pull out of out of her so Mm -hmm. so I think it was like it was really nice because it was fun for us individually as like character work but it was I would say more fun to kind of go how is this how is this like influencing how is this shaping (laughs) where the story needs to go and and that's like that's that's so uh satisfying I think definitely absolutely and it was cool timing wise too, because basically we finished filming Madison stuff and Sarah flew into Thailand and it was kind of like, I'm tapping out, she's tapping in and, and everything shifted. And I just, I think it's cool. You got to do it in that order too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
definitely. Um, Rory, I've got to say as well, and this is a compliment. So remember, this is a compliment because you seem like <laughs> such a cool guy, but you play an arrogant <laughs> prick so well. Um, <laughs> how did you find playing the role of Ryan? Because he, I was like, I was like, I'm getting really angry now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, good fun. Um, I feel like actually it's kind of funny. I feel like before we started shooting, Kurt and I were talking about it, and I was like, I'm having a hard time liking Ryan. And Kurt was like, You can't, you can't not like him because if you don't like him, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna end up being a real prick. Mm -hmm. So it was like trying to like navigate finding the 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 genuineness in in him as well in like why he is there and what he's after out of these people that he seemingly sees business opportunities in um i feel like maybe it's something i've like recently i don't know i'm on this real like business train at the moment and it's mm-hmm. recently something that maybe i've actually drawn a bit closer to ryan in the last couple of months that <laughs> which is not great but it's like being hungry to sort of make a name for yourself and like make something of yourself and you know i don't know ryan doesn't necessarily want to put himself in front of the camera and be the influencer but he sees this potential in these people that he's meeting and so you know you have that scene where he's with um where he's with cw and he's kind of like he sees that potential that he saw in in madison as well and he's trying to swing that as well but um yeah, it's trying not to make him like too much of a prick. <laughs> yeah. No, but I will say, like, I do agree. Like, as the film went on and as characters and layers started to sort of um open up, I will definitely say that I I did towards the end, I did warm to him by the end of the film. So I wasn't like completely angry, which I which I think is great because you know, you with all of the characters, there's so many aspects of all the characters, which is obviously just great writing in general, and of course acting where you can see so many layers that you can see the the good and the bad in all of them. And yeah, even even when it comes to Ryan at the end, I was like, okay, you know what? Yeah. I, I can see what what it is. And because I think <laughs> sounds about because you're British as well, I feel like because I know I saw so many I grew up with so many more British people in social media. <laughs> That I, was yeah. like, oh, I know I know this person. I'm, yeah. I grew up watching this person. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's what you say, though, isn't it? It's like it's that balance, isn't it? It's like seeing that side of him, but also seeing seeing behind the um, what's that word? The uh, the is it posturing? Seeing yeah behind that sort. As of... I'm lent like this, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seeing behind that facade and like and seeing you know the thing that makes this person tick as well as the bravado that you know comes with it Mm -hmm. so yeah it's a balance and obviously your break sorry go on no i was just gonna say so much of the movie is about kind of those first first impressions and like we hope that you kind of judge all the characters and then slowly start to be like oh is that is that necessarily true is there is this first impression that we just saw of, of all four of them is that the actual person they are or is this just the scenario and the situation they're in um and we're seeing a very skewed version of that of that character yeah it's definitely very meta too yeah yeah kind of playing with with those expectations like we really want you to judge madison we want you to judge ryan and then we want to start to slowly kind of unravel it and unpack that for the audience so that was a that was a goal for for tesh and i it it definitely and there's a scene again. I don't want to give too much away, but there's a um sort of a, a flashbacky scene, let's say, between um Ryan and Madison that I was like, oh my god, this is like really cute, and I was like, it like kind of brings you back to, and I think it's something that maybe a lot of people will be able to relate to because it it is it's like this is us before social media in a sense, and you get to see sort of the beginnings of those people. And it's kind of bittersweet because then you kind of see, you know, how people change and you think, oh, is have they really changed or is this a persona like you say? Um, so there is so many like great lists film where you, it makes you just think about the world and you think there are people out here like that that are, you know, I feel like so many younger people that I feel sorry for because they just, they get into this world of social media now and it's kind of like, it's the in thing to do. So they completely change the way they are so I think this film's so poignant and comes at a great time because I feel like there was the Instagram phase and then everything kind of dwindled and then TikTok kind of rode, rode everything up again so I think this has come at like such a great time for people like it made I sat there and I thought 
I'm not going to go on Instagram tonight. I'm going <laughs> to get my book. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I got a book and I sat outside and I blasted Lana Del Rey and it was, it yes. was. Let me tell you, it was just, summertime sadness was not a thing. Um, <laughs> and obviously, Rory, your your breakout role was yeah. in a horror movie back in 2012 with Rufus. So how was it returning to sort of the genre that you sort of began in, in a sense? Yeah, I actually hadn't really thought of that. I guess I haven't like done a horror film, but I mean, yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Uh, I did, I did, I guess I did like some short films in between that were that should never see the light of day that <laughs> would maybe be considered horror. <laughs> but um, yeah, horror is a good genre, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of. I feel like when I did Rufus, it was it hadn't had that uh, resurgence yet, maybe in twenty twelve, mm-hmm. and then it's now become this like everyone loves horror i mean i love horror now as well it's the point where i'll like watch a horror film on my own uh which i never used to do because i was way too scared but yeah it's fun it's fun getting covered in blood and like doing something that can be horror but also has like got some tongue and cheek into it as well and it's like it's not just when you think of a horror film it's not just jump scares i mean there's so many like sub uh branch it there's so many branches off of horror that make it interesting and you know with with influencer it being like a horror but a thriller and like a real there's a drama at at the essence of it as well with the with the lives that we're following so yeah it's a fun it's a fun genre also we're saying this as we like slowly the sun i know it's so so sorry like it's given like host vibes now i'm waiting for someone to like just come (laughs) out behind you like I'm just like creeping closer and closer so the screen light is illuminating us. <laughs> oh God, it's all good. Um, okay, I've just got a couple of final questions, which are sort of questions for everyone as we um we sort of wrap up. But one of them, another um influencery question coming up for all of you. If you were an influencer in real life, what would your niche be? Oh, I have one already. Oh, <laughs> go on. Well, I did this last year and it was really fun. I guess I'm kind of an influencer, I guess. So I uh, co-founded a company called Some Days and we uh, we um, have a period pain simulator and I would just go around uh, making men feel period pain. You can find it on TikTok under, um, at Get Some Days. It's really, really good fun. So I'm going to stick with my current niche, which is making men feel pain. That's a great niche. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I don't know what mine would be. I think I've always quite uh, liked, you know, like young Philly. Uh, I like, you know, just like standing on the street asking questions, but I think I've never been <laughs> quite like funny enough or witty enough to really like make them interesting. But like young Philly and chunks, I mean, I I like, I love, do you guys, do any of you guys know who that is? No, okay, fair. <laughs> he is like, he is like hilarious. The two of them are hilarious. I absolutely love them. So I think it would be like, yeah, it would just be it'd be standing on the street asking drunk people questions and and being witty enough to make a joke out of it. Probably, that's a good niche. Mm-hmm. It's not really niche, is it? It's well, much... no, actually, <laughs> it's a great wide niche. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That looks deep in <laughs> Sarah, you look like you've got a great answer. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Kurt, you were speaking. Kurt, you you were about to say something. I'm I would, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I resent the whole thing, but uh, probably something in the cooking world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like a good white, for you. white boy takes on all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I was going to say eating delicious food. Like if I got to go around trying delicious food everywhere, I think I'd be really right. happy. So you really luck out. For you. Got that. Well, not luck out, but like you've really hit a winner if you just go around the place eating free food, don't you? That is <laughs> right. a real great ticket. See, I, I made the mistake of having to cook it. <laughs> yeah. But you can cook all back. And Emily's going to eat it. Yeah. You can yeah. work yeah. do a collab. You can do a collab. <laughs> you can have co-niches. Yeah. I think mine I think mine would be something like I I grew up in Newfoundland um on the East Coast uh and um a lot of British influence actually in Newfoundland too. And uh I would maybe piggyback off those ideas there are a couple of accounts that i follow that are so 
like it just never fail to make me laugh and cheer me up because it, it's so niche. It's like some of it, not only would you only understand it if you're from Newfoundland, you'd only understand it if you grew up like I, I did from like out around the bay somewhere, which are like these little tiny outport communities. And I'm like, maybe my niche would be doing yeah. influencer stuff in like someone's shed it's like someone what someone is cooking or or pickling in their shed you know in the middle of in the middle of nowhere Newfoundland like that would be that's <laughs> like the, the most like the most fun I can imagine of me doing anything in this world that would actually be very fun and <laughs> extremely niche so yeah Dara I totally <laughs> you like mummering and going into <laughs> sheds as like in a mummering outfit. <laughs> 100%. Okay, oh, we're on to something. <laughs> Changing my relationship to Instagram as we speak. <laughs> Love it. This, that was some Love great, it. I didn't even know what my niche, because I suppose like niches, like obviously I love film. I mean, my niche would probably be something. To, uh, I mean, I always think, again, it's not really a niche, but it's an area of influence. And I honestly think travel travel influencers have got a good job because there's people just call them like hey yeah. do you want to come here we'll pay for everything and you're like yeah like it's giving that, it is <laughs> it's given that like they were they had a lot of the ones that i t- i'm obsessed it's so embarrassing what i'm going to say online i'm a i watch i watch disney vlogs okay so i watch people go to disney world and like <laughs> I'm, that's sweet I'm, I'm, I'm going in six weeks no four weeks um so I'm so excited. I was like, oh my God, maybe I can do that. But like, I'm going with my nan and my two like younger cousins. I'm like, that's not going to be like a... Oh, like, that'll make it even better. People oh, honestly, see yeah. your nan at Disney World. But she's like, <laughs> my grandmother is an absolute nightmare. She she's, <laughs> she would make good, like, she, I love her to bits and I can't say anything because she's actually paying for the holiday. But if she, <laughs> she goes on all of the rides. She's 66. She goes on all of the rides apart from the crazy hot ride. But the... No- the noises she makes, I had to tell her, she's going like, oh, and I'm like, Nan, these are not noises we need to be making, like, you know, quite wailing <laughs> noises. And I'm like, not appropriate for a ride. Let's, you know, let's calm it down. <laughs> so I think tra- travel would be mine or horror. Well, I mean, kind of what I, I love doing, like the horror film and like talking. I, this is like my favorite thing to like watch movies and then talk to people about the movies, like just because you get so many more layers to films. And I think horror itself has is one of those that's kind of, overlooked a lot of the time by the mainstream when in reality there's so many great stories and underlying like people say oh i don't like jumps like people think everything's just insidious which is great film but you know there's so much horror out there that has so much more nuance and all these things underneath that i'm like you'll need to watch this stuff obviously influencer being absolutely one of them um i i tweeted it's like already it's one of my probably one of my favorite films of the year so far so and we're halfway through so i'm absolutely loving it um which leads me on to my penultimate question which is so other than influencer which is iconic um what's a moment in the horror space in in the last year it could be a tv show a movement or a movie or anything that stood out to you oh. Which is... question in the last year yeah in the last year i mean you can go saw hereditary this year or midsummer <laughs> oh really so I, I, yeah those are a bit older i think just hereditary for like hereditary oh no yeah okay so hereditary like the one most jarring scene i've seen in any film ever which if you guys have seen it i'm sure you know which scene i'm talking about is just absolutely horrendous uh, I also watched um, uh, Gaspar Noe's Enter the Void this mm. year, which was a very strange experience. We actually watched Climax uh, in Thailand together. The, the the A couple of us did. And that was, I never watched Climax and I was buzzing to watch it. And it's one of my favorite films now. And then since then, I've watched Enter the Void. I didn't like it as much, but it was equally as intense. Mm-hmm. It was really, have you seen it? I have, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it is really good. And I just, yeah, it was also like, again, you'll know which scene I'm talking about in the bathroom. I was mm-hmm. like, one of the most jarring film scenes I've just ever seen in my life. So mm-hmm. yeah, mine would be uh, Enter the Void. So I'm quite new to the horror world. I was never a horror girl, but I watched Pearl. I guess it's uh, like, I watched yeah. Pearl so and then I watched X and I'm just like, obsessed and I cannot wait for Maxine Mm -hmm. and it really like opened my mind 
to horror because sky's the limit with horror. You could literally make what what like it's like an old Hollywood film meets horror. It's, it's like just a coming so, of age story, isn't it? It it's is just beautiful. It's, it's beautifully done. It's stunning. The cinematography was great. The acting was great. Um, my goth is like my new celebrity crush. Um, best. And so I'm like, so excited for Maxine. I can't wait. Yes, she's so good. Yeah, so, so good. good. What else have we got around yeah, the table? I, piggyback off of that, I don't watch a lot of horror. I did when I was a teenager. I loved horror movies. I rent them all the time. Um, but I lost my nerve somewhere in my early 20s. So now I can't watch anything without like a blanket over, over my face. <laughs> I watched Pearl not having any idea what I was going in for. And I just, what a journey. I loved the film and I haven't watched the other ones yet, but I absolutely will. So um, I'm with you on that front. I just think horror is such a brilliant genre and uh, what a great community. Um, I just think it's, it's a cool thing that we can all share. And uh, yeah, I'm with you. Pearl was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's been a bunch of really cool horror films lately. Um, like Doug Smile and Barbarian was really cool. Uh, the ending of, of Men was, I think, probably the craziest. Yeah. That whole sequence. I don't if you haven't seen it, definitely it's worth men. watching. Because it, yeah. yeah. The Alex men. Garland movie. Yeah. Um, who's the actress in it? It's the girl from. Oh, it's uh, Jesse Buckley and yes. um, Jesse Buckley, yeah. Rory Kinnear. A24. Yeah. Oh, okay. Both incredible. I was also thinking of They're so good. and the end yeah. of Men. Is, yeah. But the entire, I actually, the entire film, I was like, <laughs> I mean, she's great, but what Rory Kinnear is doing is like, yeah. what it's is wild. this? Wow. <laughs> um, Add it to yeah, the I thought those things were the best. There we go. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it gets real it's weird. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, I would say that one as well. I just watched Rosemary's Baby for the first time. Oh, yeah. I love that film. Like, the, 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 too. the music, just she's icon. Like, the whole setting is just like that's a comfort film for me, which probably shouldn't be a comfort film with what it's depicting. But, like, <laughs> and the book, if you haven't read the book, the book is so good. Um, mm. I'm intrigued because. Uh, although it's not been at its best recently, American Horror Story is the next season is uh, based on a new book that's coming out next month, which is Delicate, which is kind of clusters a um, a new ver a newer version um, or idea based on Rosemary's Baby, um, but more like a more taken more of a feminist stance on on that and sort of. So I'm really I'm I'm looking forward to that because I think that's going to be great because um, yeah, Rosemary's Baby is. It's up there, but also just in general, like I think in the last few years, indie horror in general is really just coming onto the scene a lot, which I think is just so exciting. I mean, even I know there's so there is so much like you could talk about all of them, but obviously one that's kind of broke through in its crazy own way, which was Terrifier Two, uh, which is obviously extremely gory horror film that now Terrifier Three has been picked up and will have a wide theatrical release, which is crazy, and I hope that we get more of that with indie horror because i think we need to understand that's where it's at its best like you look at all of these smaller films and stuff like paranormal activity that kind of all started off as just this tiny little and just grow to these huge lengths and i think we need to get people to open their eyes to more horror that's maybe not as mainstream as a lot of the other franchises did you see uh did you yeah. see skinnamarink i did see skinnamarink yeah what did it, yeah, what did, what, what did um, you think? I applaud him. Um, it was very interesting. It was not a film for me, but I can see why people liked it. And yeah. I but kudos to him as a creator and as an artist and director to create that and for it to do what it did. To me, that's the most important thing. It found this audience and just skyrocketed. Wow. I was just not um, one of those members of the audience. Chelsea. Yeah, I actually, I think Canadian I movie. That. Yes, go on, go on, Kurt. Oh, it just shot in in Alberta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. I think it was one of the reasons why I wanted to check it out as well. Um, but yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I'm like, I absolutely love how experimental it was. Um, but it just, it was pretty, it was pretty whack. 
but I I read the uh, I read the <laughs> I loved it for how experimental it was, and then mm -hmm. I I also read the like um like the the explanation online afterwards, and I was like, oh okay, I like I appreciate it for sure. But yeah, it was like it was so weird. I've never seen anything like it before. Um, but yeah, super cool. And I mean, it was like made for nothing, wasn't it? It mm. was so so cheap. Mm -hmm which is crazy. I do. I, and I love that. Like I haven't seen it yet, but I know that that director used to do something with a YouTube channel. I think oh, really? we were talking about it, where people would send him their nightmares and then he would turn their nightmares into like little short films. <clears throat> oh, oh no, no, thanks. Yeah. So good. It's just like, so I'm like, yay great go go make weird films i just think that's so i love when people have that sort of like it, like i just love true film nerds <laughs> yeah there's yeah. really not a film like it it's truly unique. yeah it's incredible yeah it, it really is and that's why I, I always think you know it may not have been for me but i can like it yeah. was well, it's definitely i've never seen anything like it, like you say so i know that it's it is a great film and there's another guy who i'm really excited who's very similar to like what he's done is um, his name's Curtis Pixels, and he did these found footage back room videos. Obviously, like the back rooms is this sort mm -hmm. of idea, and he's now just signed with Blumhouse. He's doing an A twenty four movie. Oh, A twenty four, yeah, like yeah. Wow. um so, to do these back rooms. Which I mean, his view, his videos were insane, and that's what I mean. Like getting these. That's the good thing about social media, you know. Let's end on a positive. The good yeah. thing about social media is, you know, all these directors and these actors and things can get their work out there, and it might obviously, you know, not all of them, but there's some out there that then you know get on to do bigger and better things. So for the for all its pain and sorrow, there is a there is a positive side to there's some. some that kid's some. still in high school, I think. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's 19, like doing like a big budget studio movie. I was yeah. like, come on, <laughs> come on Blair Witch, yeah, yeah. like it's yeah. it's crazy. No way. Yeah, so yeah, he was like doing it during summer break or something. It was so yeah. weird. Wow. Wow. Yeah, That's so wild. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, those but... shorts are cool. Yeah, I I, mm -hmm. I I was I was watching them every week as they came out, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. But uh, before everyone goes, obviously I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone for joining me. But I kind of want to know for for me and for everyone else watching. I know that your world is always quite secretive, but is um you know can, is there anything you can tell us about what's coming up in the pipeline for some of you stuff that you are allowed to say or hints maybe for any of you? Let's get all the vibes quick make something up <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm <Hi>. so busy <laughs> um, i got to work on a on a pretty cool film called it's a wonderful knife i don't have a release date yet mm -hmm. but that's coming probably christmas time it's a christmas slasher oh we love it's slashers a good time yeah nice mm -hmm. um i am oh yeah writing something which may or may not turn out as a pile of trash, but we'll find out. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm kind of, I've become really enthused about that. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. That's exciting. Yeah. Nice. I shot something actually right before I left for Thailand, which was another sort of thriller, horror, independent film. Uh, it was myself and another wonderful actress named Julia Sarah Stone, and it's called Zoe MP4. And that'll be coming out in the next year sometime. So that's Ooh, exciting. That looks exciting. Uh, in, yeah, I guess the next horror film that should be coming out soon that I'm in uh, is called Dark Match. And uh, it's an 80s wrestling horror film. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Uh, and it was, it was fun. It was, I never thought I'd play a wrestler. And now I... I know I can without throwing my back out, which is a miracle. So mm -hmm. please, everyone, watch it. <laughs> <Absolutely>. Front row. <laughs> um, we just wrapped a movie with Brandon Christensen directing, who did Superhost, um, which is this like really crazy ride of a movie that follows these two cops as things go horribly, horribly wrong. Um, and then, yeah, we, we've got a couple things in development that were. We're looking to shoot soon, but nothing really announceable yet. 
That's fair. The world is a secret. Know. But that's all it says. Same sounds like some exciting stuff in the pipeline. So I'll I will be I will be there ready to ingest all sorts of content that I can. So definitely. But I want to say just again a huge thank you to everyone, to Emily, Sarah, Curtis, Cassandra, and um Rory as well. Just thank you so much for popping on in sh- short notice and talking about this film for everyone. If you I mean if you haven't seen it, why not? Shudder, it's available now. Go and check it out. It's absolutely brilliant. It's you will I had no expectation. I was like, I don't know what this is. To so go in with an just and it's just oh I can't. I was like, I'm telling everyone on my friends, I'm like, has anyone watched Influence? And they're like, no. And I'm like, why don't we why don't we watch it right now? So <laughs> um because there's just so many great layers and like all the stuff that there's so much I think in rewatch factor that kind of adds to things. There's so many questions that I want to ask, but I don't want to be spoilery for you guys who haven't seen it. So do check it out. Um, it is amazing. And thank you so much, everyone, again, for joining me. And have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. You have been listening to the Horror Hour.